Baby, can y'all please get an ambulance here? This man is dying. He just took his last breath, man. And now to a developing story this morning. The search is on for the person who shot three people, including a 14-year-old. One man died. And 26-year-old Donovan Thomas was in the most serious condition, and the medical examiner's office confirmed he did not survive. Neighbors in Atlanta's Castleberry Hill neighborhood heard the gunfire around 7.30 Saturday night. Heard like some like a semi-automatic. Crime that comes to your office now is gang related. Gang related. But a terrible trend of retaliation in which anyone can become collateral damage. Breaking news from overnight, a teen is injured after someone fired nearly two dozen shots during a music video shoot. It happened last night at the Martin Street Plaza Apartments in Southeast Atlanta. We're told the rapper YFN Lucci was on scene shooting a music video when shots were fired at his Bentley. Atlanta police hope surveillance video will find the person who shot and killed a 31 year old mother at a bowling alley. Family members, family members say that she shared a son with rapper Young Thug. Hey yo squad, what's the drill? Back with another video, man. You know this video has been widely requested given that the Fulton County, Georgia District Attorney Fonnie Willis has been on the hunt for gang members and that's been having the rappers in a chokehold with Rico's left and right. Um, I have a message today that you will hear repeated time and time again. If you thought Fulton was a good county to bring your crime to, to bring your to, um, you are wrong and you are going to suffer consequences. The dark truth about these Ricos is that the bloodshed in Atlanta is out of hand and one gang feud in particular is said to have resulted in the ops going on a rampage spinning the block over the hit of the OG Big Nut. 30 plus op packs was in the air and two rappers, YFN Lucci and Young Thug is at the center of it all. The retaliation for Peanut had dudes stepping like the Jackson 5. So without further ado, let's skip the play play and get down to business. January 10th, 2015, respected big homie Donovan Thomas, aka Peanut, lost his life at the hands of his ops. He was well connected to the streets and according to law enforcement was a big dog in the Inglewood family gang set. In the scene with that movie, Independent Gang, tell me what's going on. Peanut was caught lacking outside of a barbershop on 330 McDaniel Street in Atlanta. A 2014 Silver Infinity Q50 sedan drove by and bullets rained down on Peanut, hitting him in his upper body. By the time the paramedics got to him in the hospital and tried to save his life, he was too far gone and he passed away. The third 26-year-old Donovan Thomas was critical. Had a significant injury. We had uh, at least multiple gunshot in the upper uh, torso area. He was rushed to surgery. Thomas died at the hospital. Homicide detectives looked for bullet holes. Court documents exposed that Peanut's brother was there when he took his last breath, and he revealed the last words being, Thug had me killed. Not only this, some gang members who carried out the hit folded and started snitching to the feds. They told everything, even down to the rapper Young Thug renting the car used in the hit. Kenneth Copeland, AKA Lil Woody, was singing like Tweety Bird. All fingers pointed to the alleged gang Young Slime Life, also being responsible for Peanut's passing, with gang co-founder Young Thug being the head, and the feds also believed the same. That was the spark that lit the fuse, and hell was about to rain down on the streets. Retaliation was a must, and the community, feds, and gang members on both sides knew what was coming. The get back was swift. First in line on Inglewood family's list was the YSL member they blamed for Peanut being targeted, Lil Woody. On January 5th, Inglewood family gang member Kelvin Watts assaulted and attempted to rob YSL member Kenneth Copeland at Club Crucial. Atlanta Police Department gang unit investigators pinpointed this as what led to the YSL retaliation taking the life of Peanut. So an eye for an eye, Lil Woody had to go. Not even a day after Peanut was murked, the ops walked down on Woody. In fact, the same night, retaliation was the motive when the parents of Woody's girl's house was wet up. What's crazier is that the ops didn't stop there, with the Inglewood family member slotting again just hours later. This time targeted his brother's crib. They got the wrong house and instead hit up his bro's neighbor's house before realizing they targeted the wrong house and again slid hitting up the brother's spot. They were ruthless, but this goes to show just how much respect and weight Peanut had in the city. Investigators listed a number of retaliatory shootings between the two gangs, up to 26, but that number was only to rise even further. Woody's family was feeling the pressure, but Woody 
had his coming. Six weeks after Peanut was murked on February 19th, Woody exited his baby mom's crib with a car seat for his little girl. His street senses kicked in and he spotted a suspicious whip in the distance. Putting the baby in the car, he kept alert. And that hood instinct saved his life because the car pulled up and the glass lowered and the barrel of an assault rifle poked out and Woody recognized the trigger man as Mr. Fleetwood. Woody pulled out his 40 caliber Glock and ducked down before hearing a shot let off. Woody returned fire, then grabbed his daughter from the car to the safety of the house. At that point, Woody knew he had to stand on business and came out bussing, causing the ops to swerve off, crashing into a house further up the block. Woody was picked up by cops on probation violation the following day, and that's where he told authorities that he recognized someone named Tay in the vehicle and told investigators, although he doesn't know his real name, Tay has a brother who goes by Javante Fleetwood, aka Wu, and is a well-known blood member. Authorities track down who they believe to be the shooter, Wu's brother, the Levante Fleetwood, and in a picture lineup, Woody clearly pointed him out. In a picture with the information of Woody's interview with investigators, a piece of information showed the woman calling officers and advising she just spoke with her man Franklin. He told her he was driving her car when a random roadman opened fire causing him to crash the whip so he dipped and left it at the scene. Social media, the detective's most powerful tool against gangsters today, connected Tate to Nut with a long-lived King Nut pick and the words on his profile saying, Nut life or no life. If that was the end of the back and forth and retaliation, it would have been a blessing to everyone involved, but the streets and vengeance go hand in hand and it never stops. While cops scrambled to get a hold of the crimes, more family members and gang members were under fire. YSL member and shooter in the peanut shooting Shannon Jackson, aka SB, was about to experience what get back felt like by the ops. September 2015, on a late Friday, 25-year-old Tiara Jones finished working earlier than normal. She picked up her homegirl Shakoya Duncan and her man SB and they made a food run to JJ Fish and Chicken on Prior Street, Atlanta. This is where SB got into an altercation with a dude that was allegedly spitting game on his shorty. Angry at her for speaking with the dude, they dipped, but they were on his head. Jones's SUV was followed and numerous shots were fired. Shakoya ducked when she heard shots, but Tierra wasn't so lucky. Out of the three people in the SUV, only one was hit, Tiara Jones. She received a headshot to the face as she drove off on Milton Avenue near Hank Aaron Drive in Turner Field. According to police reports and witnesses' statements, the SUV crashed and overturned pending Sequoia and SB. Both were pulled from the wreckage and taken to Grady Memorial Hospital for treatment. Unfortunately, Jones passed away at the scene. Family members were told the news by reporters that SB was in an altercation with the hitters before he was even picked up, and they were following him all along with the intent to end SB's life. Someone shot her after she took a friend to pick up her boyfriend. That's where the issue, I guess, occurred. Um, he was, from what we heard, or no, he was in an altercation prior to them picking him up. And as they were exiting or leaving, the complex or the area they were followed and gunned down if that wasn't enough evidence it was connected to peanuts hit sb would later be picked up in connection to the homicide of nut where he then gave details to investigators on who tried to take his life Want to guess who set the man up? Yup, Inglewood family affiliates. A picture of a later interview between SB and investigators show him listing the nicknames of the IF gang members as Shell, Kale, Smoke, and Merrill. He was aware of this information before, but was scared of snitching any further, fearful they might retaliate on the family, especially grandmoms. And behind bars, it was hell. SB was like a human dartboard for the ops, but instead of darts, they were poking bro up with shanks. Fearful for his life, SB was desperate to have his bond reduced to be able to return to outside. The retaliations were only to get worse because YSL had a nemesis whose villain arc progressed to the loss of nut. To rapper and IF affiliate YFN Lucci, Peanut was like a mentor and a brother. You know, I lost one of my homies who really got me on. You know, long live nut fell. Lucci took up the mantle going at the head of YSL Young Thug. They have been going at it for years plotting on each other's end. It has been up with both taking losses. Lucci has not been targeted once but twice having shots sent his way and miraculously escaping unscathed in each hit. First in May 2019 when his Mercedes SUV was shot up in Atlanta. Then again in 2020 when YFN Lucci was targeted at his music video at the 600 block of Martin Street. 
In January 2021, YFN Lucci was arrested on murder charges after reports broke that he was involved in a gang-related drive-by shooting that left one Merc in southwest Atlanta. The initial drive-by took place on December 2020. Reports state that Bennett, a.k.a. YFN Lucci, and three other criminal street gang members drove to an area dominated by a rival gang before two people in the car opened fire with assault-style rifles. One of those men, 28-year-old James Adams, was struck in the head by return gunfire and later passed away. What's colder is Lucci and them kicked bro out of the whip after he collected the headshot and left him. Another person was struck in the abdomen but was lucky to survive. With Lucci now caught up in the system, it was the perfect time to get back. March 2022, Lucci's life was targeted behind bars after he alleged a price was put on his head. He was shanked by an inmate and nearly lost his life. What's even more crazy is that in the RICO charge against YSL later on, Fed state that Thug was in fact the one that gave inmates the orders. The two sides were on a relentless get back mission because that same month, young Thug's baby moms lost her life in an altercation and it's rumored that Lucci was the one that gave the green light. Atlanta police hope surveillance video will find the person who shot and killed a 31 year old mother at a bowling alley. Family members, family members say that she shared a son with rapper Young Thug. But check this out. The identity of the person held and charged for the homicide may have confirmed it to be true. Joshua Fleetwood was held for the crime, but remember that shooter that tried to snatch Lil Woody's life after Nut passed? Yep, same family name, so it holds credibility that Inglewood family was behind it. The city was hot and each side was spinning uncontrollably, and guess who was back out ready to spin again? YSL member SB. Bro was back out and back to the shenanigans posting a pic to his IG wearing a hoodie with the name Slime with a Spanish caption referring to the tombstone of Donovan Thomas aka Peanut. He still wanted smoke and made sure he got it. March 2022, police arrested two of the three suspects they said are responsible for a shooting in southwest Atlanta that left the man murked. Police took Shannon Jackson aka SB and Quamarius Nichols into custody. Their charges stem from what police described as a gang-related shooting in the 400 block of Windsor Street. Inglewood family affiliate Shamel Drinks was found wet up multiple times just south of an I-20 overpass in the Mechanicsville neighborhood. SB and them pulled up alongside Drinks' vehicle as he was waiting at a stoplight and fired a barrage of bullets into his car. He passed away at the scene. The men were apprehended after a high-speed chase with cops. And again, so everybody knows, it's a white four-door Audi. Following the YSL RICO, four YSL members were charged in connection with Shamel's homicide. As of right now, investigators approximate the number of criminal retaliations to 37 and counting, resulting from the murk in the nut. I guess it's eternally up and infinitely stuck. Hopefully this RICO on both sides brings it to a stop. Sad this is what a past friendship came to though. Rest in peace to Big Nut, man. So there you have it. Thanks for kicking it with your boy. Appreciate the love and support.